Congressional leaders visited the White House Friday afternoon, each in their own black SUV, no carpooling with this bunch. But they say they've made progress towards at least a limited fiscal cliff deal. Problem is, New Year's and the cliff are just around the corner, setting up the possibility that after months of playing chicken, next week we'll all leap off Washington's favorite fiscal metaphor. You might call this Thelma and Louise economics, right off the cliff. Let's keep going. If the fiscal cliff is like Thelma and Louise, why are Susan and Gina smiling while Barack and John just seem so glum? No, there must be a better cinematic analog to the cliff, so let's consider the options. Maybe it's Hitchcock's fear of vertigo. Like Jimmy Stewart in the film, we're worried, even though we're not sure how bad the fall will be. Where's the cinch? The romantic in us hopes Harry Reid might be a cleverly disguised James Dean. She signals, we head for the edge, and the first man who jumps is a chicken. After all, Congress asked for this standoff when they passed the last debt ceiling deal. Maybe they're just waiting for the right moment to jump out of the car. Or maybe their sleeve is already stuck on the door. Some say it's a fiscal slope, not a cliff. But any lawmaker strolling by the exorcist steps in Georgetown knows even a slope can bang you up pretty good. And if the Speaker of the House loses grip of his caucus, if the country falls off the ledge like so many wily e. coyotes, maybe the economy will remain suspended in the air longer than we think. Should we really trust politicians who most times don't read the legislation anyway? Maybe we'll be saved at the last minute by magical forces or just competent governance. Well, we mustn't keep our public waiting, huh? Or more likely, will careen recklessly a little longer confident no real harm will come of it. And as the cameras roll, head off the cliff and wait till tomorrow. Maybe it's not Thelma and Louise. Maybe it's Groundhog Day.